Hello and welcome to Trash Arts Tick. This week it's a special Star Wars edition for May the 4th and this time we're going to focus on how the animated series has kind of influenced the live action and the Mandalorian and then the future of Disney Star Wars and all the other TV sort of shows that are coming out around that and particularly I suppose the films as well if we want to talk about that and I'm joined by the awesome James E. Taylor who's been on the show before. Hi James. I am. I've actually not been on the uh, on, on the on the podcast before. Have you not? I thought you have. What? You have. No, I, 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 I performed. I performed on the podcast, but this is my first time as a guest. Ah, right. Okay. Well, my bad. <laughs> Welcome. And we've also got the brilliant Robbie Hampstead, who has um, been on the has definitely been on the show before. He was on it a few weeks ago. Um, so hi, Robbie. You okay? Hello. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Good stuff. Good stuff. So. I just wanted to sort of um, kick things off really with, um, yeah, basically how the animated TV shows have influenced um, the live action. And the one thing that stands out for me initially is if you think of the character of Ahsoka from the the TV series, I know that whenever the Clone Wars kind of came out, um, she was she was actually kind of vilified and no one really liked her. She was, she kind of had a bit of a Marmite feel to her. And now she's one of the most popular characters. And when she was introduced into The Mandalorian, that was amazing. And I just thought that was absolutely fantastic. What, what do you guys think? Well, I think I can speak a bit more about Ahsoka um, than, than Robbie, perhaps. I think I've seen a bit more of the animated stuff than, than Rob. Um, I, I, for one, was ecstatic to see a live action uh, Ahsoka Tanu. And uh, I, I thought they, I know the girl um, Rosario Dawson um, rallied to get the part um, yeah. by sharing images of herself as Ahsoka, but I think it was perfectly cast and she, she, she brought life to the role absolutely impeccably. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, like, um, what was really interesting is, that I think, the way that they introduced her, because, you know, the Mando is set, what, five years after um, the fall of the Empire. So if you kind of say that season two maybe is a year after season one, like, if you want to go with that, so say six years, but we haven't seen her since the end of Rebels. And I know the showrunners kind of teased that at the end of Rebels, um, that could be after when you see her in... in the Mando. Um, well, yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Rebels because the way the way they left Rebels, it, it I think it is going to lead perfectly into the Ahsoka Tarnu show. Um, I think her her and um, who's the Mandalorian girl? The name the name just slipped my mind right now. Um, I think they'll be off searching for uh, for Thrawn and of course for Ezra. Yeah, yeah, because he gets trapped in the the parallel sort of dimension, doesn't he, with Thrawn? Well, they go off. They get the uh, the 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 uh, time the, the the whales who who fly through space who can yeah, yeah. Who, light speed. They, they they nip off with them, don't they? So it'll be interesting to see if uh, if Ahsoka. I mean, I want to see Thrawn live action. Um, that that would be something I think would make the fans very excited. A live action Admiral Thrawn. Oh yeah. Well, I think he's going to turn up in the Ahsoka. I think that's kind of where they're going with it, isn't it? They teased it in the Mando. I hope I hope so. Um, I'm sorry, Robbie. Again, this is something that you're maybe not so okay with. But uh, the voice actor that played Thrawn is Mix Madsen's brother in real life. The actor Mix Madsen. Um, and there's been a school of thought that Mix Madsen should maybe play Thrawn, but I, I think it should be the. I think his brother should get it. I think I think he should get. The, he looks like him. You know, they based the character. You can tell they animated the character based on how the actor looked. So he did the voice, he looks like the character. I think it would be unfair to cast anybody other than him. Yeah. There was rumour that it could have been um, Benedict Cumberbatch as well, who just yeah, plays every I'll villain. Yeah. <laughs> I'll share that picture, yeah. I, 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 w- I wouldn't argue if it was a uh, bonker dick Cumberbitch or whatever his name is. Not, not. <laughs> whatever his name is, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch, whatever it is. <laughs> what a what name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I imagine um, he probably got bullied whenever he was growing up, but we, we love a bit of Benedict here. It's all right. Um, I think as well, like uh, touching on what you just said there, James, what they kind of they cast a voice actor of, um, oh, what's her name? It's gone for me now. Kitty Sackoff's. Yeah, Sackoff, yeah. For, for La- Lady Bo Katan. Yes, that's it, Bo Katan. And um, I thought that worked perfectly because the, the transition was just awesome. And again, the way that they introduced um, the, the Mandalorians. Um, into the the Mandalorian series from the animated shows, I thought was really cool. 
it was it was a, a, an amazing part. Um, the, the Mandalorian story of uh, part of Clone Wars is my favourite part of Clone Wars, as you both uh, well know. Um, I'm a huge Mandalorian fan uh, to the point where I've, I've even got my own Mandalorian helmet. Yeah. I was showing you on, on camera before we we started recording. Um, but yeah, I, I, to see the live action Mandos, it's up there with the it's up there with seeing Luke Skywalker walking at the end of season two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that was, that was that was absolutely classic. It was, and I know it got a lot of criticism for the way that it looked, the, the kind of deep fake and stuff. But I think if you put that to one side, it's just iconic, isn't it? Like it couldn't have been anyone else. I felt twelve again. Yeah. You know, it was from the second, uh, from the second that um, Cara Dune says one uh, one X wing was saved, I knew straight away. It's like, well, you are. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's fucking the Skywalker, baby. <laughs> So I, I totally forgot about the X Wing, so I didn't know it was him until the last minute. So, um, but oh, I'd recognise Red Five a million miles away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it sort of got my attention when um, uh, Baby Yoda, known as the Child, sort of he, his ears pricked up, yeah. and he sort of sensed something. And I thought, oh, hang on, some, some someone's coming, you know, and. I have to no, say, one of the, the amazing things about the Mandalorian series, as much as I would praise it anyway, is the soundtrack. Um, Ludwig, I probably butcher his like, pronunciation, but it's, it's Ludwig Gunnarsson, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, like that, I think the song's called A Friend when Luke turns up, and that's whenever he's wiping out all of the droids. And it's yeah. kind of got this weird, I, I, it's almost like, choir element to it it's like, ha, 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 ha. and it, yeah I, I don't know it just sets the tone pain, <laughs> pardon yeah, I said you in pain there <laughs> <laughs> no not when it comes to the Mando I have to say as well like um, I've probably watched that episode the, the season 2 finale maybe about 9 or 10 times and I think only once I haven't cried and I know that's yeah. really sad like but yeah, I absolutely You're loved it. You're not the only one. You're not yeah. the only one. Because I've watched the, um, the uh, reactions on YouTube and they're boring their eyes out, they're hugging each other, you know, they're on the floor, crying their eyes out. You know? <laughs> yes, yeah, when, when, when he hands over Grogu, yeah, and he takes his helmet off, I, I'll happily admit I'm melted. Yeah. I cried, I cried like a little girl with a skin knee. Again, the music for that, it's just like Grogu's little... Um, soft little lullaby tune that has been sort of built up throughout season two. I don't think it was present in season one, but it's just that little, like, um, it, like it's almost chimes, isn't it? And, um, yeah, it's just really like a real intense moment where he just touches his face and it's, I don't know. That I, yeah. yeah. Well, we go in. You'll, you'll, you'll set, you'll set us all off. The, <laughs> the rest of this podcast will just be literally us in tears trying to struggle <laughs> our way through. <laughs> oh, dear. I also like the way where um, the, um, like, I don't know what you call them, the super stormtroopers or those robots. Death troopers. Um, death, yeah, death troopers. I, I like the way that when, like, they felt the presence of of Luke Skywalker, they sort of stopped what yeah. they were doing in their tracks and did not move and then slowly turned around. And that's when you think something big is coming. Yeah. I, I think before the episode aired... There was loads of rumours. Like, I know that the Death Troopers were already... Well, they weren't teased. They actually turned up, didn't they, and stole Grogu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, um, you saw them early on in Season 2, where, where they very, it's at the very end of, I think, it might be Episode 4, um, where Moff Gideon, sort of, you see them for the very first time, don't you? He walks in, they power them on. And, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, they're just, they're just so, so badass. But, it, you know, the, the thing that they've skipped over uh, with Mandalorian, go, to talking about the Death Troopers... Um, Luke Skywalker made very short work of them with a particular weapon, um, <laughs> with, his with his lightsaber. What's a lightsaber, James? Do you care to tell us? <laughs> oh, I, can, I can go into details with the kyber crystals, but uh, I won't bore you. <laughs> My point is that Din, um, the Mando, has got the dark saber in yep. his possession at mm -hmm. the time. So I think he'd have done a pretty good job of cutting his way through so at, at least at least some of those before succumbing. Yeah, probably, and I suppose you could theorise it. I think. But also, they left out the fact that um, um, what's her name was on the mission to grab it, and she has to fight the person who's got the dark side. Um, 
Dark Souls. So, so Bo Katan sort of like, fighting um, Moff Gideon. You sort of like skip that bit out on, on, unless they do it in like series three or whatever. I think that's what they're really setting up. So yeah. my personal opinion is that because Grogu's kind of off the show now, God yeah. knows what they're going to do with him. I kind of get the impression that we'll have another few seasons of Mando and then maybe like in season five, you'll get like a teenage Grogu. Um, a bit like what they did with um, uh, Groot. I am Groot. He's about 50 odd years old already. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. but apparently it's accelerated <laughs> growth from after that. I don't know. Because Yoda was a Jedi Master at 100. But um, <coughs> you have, uh, yeah, so to your point, um, Robbie, like I think that's, so again, in my opinion, I think that's what they're going to explore in season three is um, mm. it's going to be this whole, because he ha- he tries to hand the dark saber over to her, but she knows that she can't just take it. She has to win it in battle. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think there's going to be conflict between them two um, with some other added presence within that. But it'll be really I interesting. Think, I, th- I think we're going to see, which is going to unite try or try to unite the different clans because obviously there are there are at least six different clans that I can think of yeah. um, of Mandalorians. Um, I, I think Mando's going because he's not Mandalorian born and bred. He's a foundling. I, I believe it's, again. This is all just speculation. I believe that what will happen in season three is that there will be conflict with Mando and another clan, and he will lose the dark saber to that clan. Oh, you reckon? And, and 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 that's when Lady Bo-Katan of, of House Crease of Clan Crease will 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 take her opportunity. I think I think the Mando will lose the dark saber to another Mandalorian. He's not, not good at keeping things, is he? Well, um, <laughs> poor Din. He hasn't got the chip anymore. Now he he hasn't got the kid anymore. You know, Din by name, Din by nature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, I, I, that's what I, that's where I see the Mandalorian going. They, they they're going to go back to Mandalore. Um, there will be Mandalorians living on Mandalore, I think, I believe. Um, it won't be destroyed as, as the rumours. Again, I'm conjecting. I'm, these, these are my opinions and in, are in no way uh, reconciled by the Disney Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> if you were, I'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like Gina Carrera, Carrera. If I had a job with Disney, mate, I'd do everything I could to keep it. Yeah, she was warned. Um yeah, so the one thing I was going to ask you guys is um, the Mando kind of received a, a fair bit of criticism in terms of um, the way that the story was told. So one of the critics um, that kind of went its way was it's too much like a game. It's like a, a fetch quest. So just go here, get this. Oh, go there, and then you can sort of use that to get this. And, you know, uh, What were your thoughts on that? Do you think it, it worked for it? Did it not work? Would you have wanted more? Well, if that was a video game, I'd definitely bloody play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Rob, Robbie will have more to say on this than I will. Um, to a point, um, it, it was like, you know, backwards and forwards, do this, do that, do this, and you'll get to the next level sort of thing, you know. But um, but if you still, like, ignore that, sort of like before anyone's mentioned it, you don't really notice until someone brings it up. Yeah, if you know what I mean. No, I agree. What about yourself, James? Well, George Lucas is not exactly the best storyteller, is he? And yet, we all enjoyed the original Star Wars films. Yeah, um, I, I don't. I don't think the narrative of it is is as important as the content, really, because. I mean, they're such short episodes in season two. It isn't until the finale that you get one that's that's, that's anywhere near a decent length. They're all half an hour. But what? always staggers me with every episode how do they cram so much into half an hour yeah yeah so irrelevant of how they're getting there for me it's the content not you know it's 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 the it's it's the it's the journey not the destination yeah i agree i think um I, i'm gonna have like a massive um video game player anyway so the the kind of story the quetch quest quetch i can't say it now Quest, yeah, fetch, yeah, um, like journey and stuff. It it doesn't bother me. I actually quite enjoy it. I like the fact that whenever you get to episode one, you kind of feel, oh, he's he, you know, takes on the crit dragon. I think it's episode two then where um, it's sorry, this is season two where they land on that ice planet and he's got to fight the spiders and stuff. Oh, I hate the spiders. Yeah, oh. um, and that's actually it's really interesting because that um, spider design came from concept art from I think it was Return of the um, Jedi. 
It was it was Empire. It was Empire. It could have been Empire. Yeah. But yeah. It was definitely Hoth, off the original. It? it was for Hoth. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, and I know that a design like that has been used in Clone Wars, or or Rebels. Might have been Rebels. It was Rebels. Yeah. Yeah. Where they where, where they it was the hangar, wasn't it? And like they wouldn't come into the sunshine. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't I couldn't tell you the series or well, I'm sure there was a giant spider in Return of the Jedi as well when um R2 D2 and C three PO go for that big door. It's a robot big like, spider comes out. I'm sure it's a robotic one in Return of the Jedi. Oh right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Still I, I, spider I, design. It's a sp- it's definitely a spider. It's definitely an arachnid of some kind, but I yeah. am and it's a robotic arachnid. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just thought that, like... Um, That'd be a good name for a band, wouldn't it, Robotic Iraq? Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Robbie. Start your yeah, own band. Yeah, um, yeah, so, like, for me, even that, um, as some people would call it, filler episode, actually did a lot for the Mando's development in terms of the character, because it's like, oh, you know, you, you promised to get me there, and he's kind of like, nah, well, you know, we're crashed now, I can't do it. But she kind of pushes the boat out on him, and it's like, you need to... You know, you're meant to help people. You you need to get me to where I need to get to. Um, Are they just stories for children? But what say that again? Are they just stories for children? That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So one thing I wanted to touch on is um, Dave Filoni. So Dave Filoni, for those of you who don't know, is one of the the show writers of the Mandalorian, but he's also the creator of the Clone Wars, the animated series, and that was pretty much the first thing that he did whenever he joined. Lucas Arts. It definitely was. Yeah, it was. and um, he was under the tutelage of George Lucas at the time. So Clone Wars, I think, originally came out in two thousand and six. Am I correct? Around that mark, yeah, somewhere around there. Because it was like a, a Samurai Jack sort of Clone Wars. Initially. Yeah, there was an original one, wasn't there? And so when 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 Lucas got Floney in, um, he said, well, "I want to, I want to do Clone Wars," and Floney was like, "Well, you've already." Done Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they beefed it out, didn't they? They like really beefed it out and added a lot more depth to certain characters that we knew. And um one in particular was Anakin's arc and how oh. he he kind of he took on Ahsoka, but he learned so much and it was almost like a, a, a mirror image of him trying to be a, a Jedi and doing like it right doing it right by the Jedi Order, but always failing or like falling short certain times and Ahsoka was always that um that rock that brought him back to reality almost she um, was and it's uh, it's not until i think spoilers until um I, I couldn't tell you what season it was but when Ahsoka gets framed um, yeah that's, for, that's that's season she, that's season 7 isn't it um, i think she season 8 she comes back that's yeah. the more recent one that they did. Yeah, isn't it? There was a big hiatus, wasn't there, between season seven and season eight? So I think season eight only came out last year. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and they kind of did what was brilliant about that. I'll touch on that again in a second. But because she then gets framed, she gets wrongly convicted and stuff. And then it yeah. turns out that the real killer was another apprentice who, in essence, basically makes Ahsoka want to leave the Jedi Order. And that puts a huge lock of doubt into Anakin's mind about the Jedi, yeah, and the Council and stuff. I agree. And I think that watching that and then going back and watching Revenge of the Sith, it just reinforces the point. It really drives it home. And without Ahsoka Tano, like within the narrative, I suppose it wouldn't hit us home. No, definitely not. She was the human. She, she was like, she was as, as if. We, she was out our eyes basically, you know. She, yeah. She's seen it all when when she came into the the Clone Wars. Obviously, it started with a the movie, then it went into into the series. But you know, it was it was brilliant because much like you see the magical word of Harry Potter through Harry's eyes, because he wasn't involved in that world up until that point. Obviously, Ahsoka had had training, just unlike Harry. I'm using him as an analogy. But, you know, she went into that world as a Padawan, fighting the Clone Wars, completely fresh with open eyes. And we, as the viewer, were seeing it through Ahsoka's eyes. And she she was such a lovable character. And, you know, she showed Anakin that you don't have to follow the Jedi Order because she, she learned from him. And he didn't always follow the Jedi Order's ways, you know. That 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 is obvious, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 the it's the episode of Rebels for me, 
where uh, Ezra says, again, spoilers, guys, if you haven't watched it, uh, <laughs> where, where, where Ezra pulls um, Ahsoka out of the, the, the duel and saves her with Vader, making her the only Jedi to ever survive a duel with, with, with Vader. I know it's it's with help, but it's still bloody impressive to survive a duel with Darth Vader because not many people do. But not only that, to drive the point home on that uh, particular episode, that's the first time she realizes that um, Darth Vader is Anakin because it's hinted and she's been told like before that, oh, Anakin's going to turn to the dark side. But she's under the impression that he died in the um, in the Order 66. Yeah. So whenever she cracks Vader's mask and sees Anakin's eyes and, and like hears his voice that, you know, because it's kind of not just through the mask anymore. Yeah. And um, it's kind of like she almost like gives up yeah. and then that's when she it, pull- it, it, it breaks her doesn't it yeah it it, does. that's on in the Mandalor- in the episode of the mandalorian the jedi where where, where uh, you know ahsoka's introduced where she refuses to train grogu because you know she's the seen fear. what happens when you've got attachment yeah and and the fear and stuff as well i think but that a lot of people didn't really understand that and, and they couldn't understand well why doesn't she just train her or train him like but it's because of what had happened and her experiences like one thing that i find absolutely brilliant is initially the clone wars kind of just ended and yeah there wasn't really any kind of wrap up it just moved on lucas sold and you know lucas filmed to disney and then that was it but they brought dave filoni over and they got dave filoni to write a final season and i think it's the last four episodes in that season are some of the best like <laughs> Star Wars, I think I've ever seen personally. One thousand percent agree with you. One thousand percent. It's 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 the last four episodes of the Clone Wars season eight are better than the three movies they've done Disney. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hands down. Hands down. Uh, and if you uh, speaking to everybody, if you haven't watched the animated Star Wars universe, please do yeah. because I implore you, it, it, it enriches. All of the story, not just the movies, it's going to enrich The Mandalorian, it's going to enrich Ahsoka, it's going to enrich Kenobi, it's going to enrich Knights, enrich Knights of the New Republic. It's basically going to touch all corners of the future Star Wars uh, TV and film universe. Yeah, definitely. And it, like, even if you can't watch all of the... Um, so for yourself, Robbie, and anyone who's listening, if you can't watch all of this, like, uh, eight seasons, the last four episodes in season eight, you don't have to know anything contextual. Like, you'll know Darth Maul. You kind of get reintroduced to Ahsoka, so you can kind of see that relationship with Anakin. But the last four episodes basically cross over with the Order 66. Yeah. Um, and Ahsoka's on Mandalore, isn't she? Um she is and Darth Maul's there and like it's the siege isn't it there's like a big siege happening and yeah. it's really cool because there's a standoff where basically Darth Maul's trying to convince Ahsoka to join him to take down what would be then well becoming the Emperor and um, to take down Palpatine but he basically turns around to her and says oh yeah Anakin's gonna turn she just doesn't believe it doesn't want to believe it and then they get into a fight and what was really cool is they got the guy who played Darth Maul originally from Phantom Menace. Um, so not the voice actor, the actual guy who... Ray Park, I think his name is. Yes, that's it. Um, they got him and um, someone else to like actually do a live-action fight. And then they, you know, like with... Uh, I can't even think what it's called. Like the stuff that they use for Gollum. CGI. It's what's not CGI. They put this stuff on them and then they... Oh, motion capture. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So they, they actually did that. So it's a proper person fight. It hasn't been drawn or animated. So yeah, it's really it's really interesting. Robbie, if you get the chance, have you seen any of like the animated stuff at all? About 10 seconds. Of, um, <laughs> um, I've not watched the cartoons at all because um, I'm not really a... I don't really do the cartoons. I just like watching the the films and the, like the live action series and things like that. But um, it's uh, no the cartoons. They don't really do anything for me. I, I mean, uh, yeah, obviously they're like filled with, filled with like loads of information of who is this and who is that. But um, it's just not my scene. No, that's fair. <laughs> what would you say then, in terms of the first two series of the Mando? What would be your 
your favorite moment? And that's probably a stupid question because I imagine we've touched on it. But yeah, what would be your favorite moment? Um, strangely enough, is my favorite moment is um, when um, I can't remember the, his name, Baby Yoda. Um, Grogu. Grogu, that's it. Um, he keeps on trying to grab hold of the little ball on that lever. Yeah. And uh, in the end, he just gives it and gives it to him, you know? <laughs> that's, I think there's something really, like, sweet about that as well, because then yeah. they kind of bring that over into season two, as, don't they? So, um, And that's the object that they kind of use to try and train him with the force and hon- hone yeah. in on his powers. And I just love the way there's also, I think it's in the second season, where he has to, like, do all these spinning manoeuvres and he doesn't like it. Man, Mando doesn't like it. And in the background, you see Yoda going, hey! Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he, he, he throws up the blue. Yeah, thing. yeah, he's been, he stole the um, the cookies from that kid in the, the, the sort of school thing, doesn't he? Yeah. And then he's yeah. just sitting there eating them all. <laughs> <laughs> There's I so love many the way memes. He's eating that poor woman's baby egg as well. <laughs> Say that oh. again. He was eating that. Um, I don't know. If oh yeah, yeah. Um, Frog woman. He was, eating, he was eating her bloody babies. You know. <laughs> the internet went batshit crazy over that as well. They're unfertilized eggs. They're essentially chicken eggs. Yeah. You can eat unfertilized as long as they're not fertilized. They're not life. I thought that was quite funny. The backlash of that, like people wanted um, Mandalorian removed. And um, if not the Mandalorian removed, that Grogu should be taken out of the show and stuff because <laughs> eating eggs. <laughs> well, to answer your question, Ryan, about my favourite moment of, of Mandalorian season, uh, season two, um, I'm going to go a slightly different route because I'm a huge Boba Fett fan, as yeah. as anyone who knows me will, 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 will tell you. Um, and the first time Boba Fett st- appears in his in his armor again with his helmet on and and then single-handedly smashes an entire troop of stormtroopers that is my favorite moment of 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 almost anything for the last 10 years to be perfect. <laughs> so yeah that's fun uh, excuse me <laughs> i hate to interrupt but i don't get this it might have like explained in the cartoons or not i don't know but the last time we saw him mm-hmm in Return of the Jedi, he got swallowed by a giant pit thing. It was a Sarlacc pit, wasn't it? Sarlacc, yeah. Yeah. What you're forgetting, he's wearing, he's wearing Beskar. Mandalor- the Mando himself was inside the Crate Dragon, who was, who was breathing acid over everybody in, this, in Season 2, Episode 1, The Marshal. He was, the the Crate <laughs> Dragon was, was breathing acid, green acid over, over all of the Sand people. And it was completely destroying them. But when Din goes inside, he comes out, he's fine. So for me, the book of Boba Fett is going to explain, that'll be the first thing it has to explain, is how he got out of the Sarlacc. To, to sort of... Oh, well, um, you told me then. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Robbie, but I, I, Boba is my man. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, I, I, I'm a happily married, you know... Uh, straight guy, but if if Boba Fett come knocking, I think I'd fly off in Slave One with him without even thinking twice. <laughs> no, maybe some I'm information we didn't need to know. <laughs> I'd, pol- I'd, polish, I'd, polish, I'd polish Boba's helmet. <laughs> yeah, moving on swiftly. <laughs> uh, it, it, you raise a good point, though, like James. That well, actually, very quickly, Robbie. One thing that. Um, you you said there so if you look at legends so i know that there's a clear distinction now between what is considered canon and what is considered legends but in the legends stories boba fett does get out of the sarlacc pit he actually gets out a couple of times um but yeah and like one thing i'm really interested to find out is how the hell did he get out and then how did he lose his armor that it ends up with you know the marshal in season two episode one well, the, the, oh, the, yes, Jawas, yes. the Jawas are famous for salvaging, aren't they? That's what that's what Jawas do. Mm-hmm. They salvage. So they would have salvaged the armor from somewhere. Um, the crate dragon um, ate a Sarlacc. Um, so maybe when the crate dragon ate the Sarlacc in that pit, that's when the Jawas maybe would have salvaged the uh, the armor, Boba Fett's armor, Boba Fett's armor. That's my theory. Potentially, good work. I think um, 
my favorite moment has got to be when Grogu's doing like some of that training. Um, you know, he's, I mentioned it earlier, he's got the little ball and he's getting, um, well, Mando's basically holding the ball and he's got to sort of catch it and what have you. I just, I don't know, there's something about that whole intimate scene where you find out like his name and it's just really blasé the way that they kind of like put it across. And yeah, it's, I just love that. And the music again, this, and then you find out a bit of his backstory. And I know loads of people have put like memes in of the, whenever Anakin goes in to kill the younglings and um, they've kind of Photoshopped Grogu into the background somewhere. Well, I've got a theory here. This is, this is, this is, you, you, you might like this, you might not, but when Anakin goes to the Jedi temple to slaughter the younglings, who was with him? It was the. No, no. There was there was only one entity with him when he went to the Jedi Temple, and it was R two D two. Because when he gets when when he gets back from slaughtering the younglings, he goes to see Padme, and R two D two goes up to C three PO and beeps something, which I always interpreted as you are not going to believe the shit I've just seen, <laughs> and and C three PO replies, "Not so loud, R two. You know, basically keep it down." Right. R2-D2 was at the temple with Anakin when he slaughtered the younglings. That is definitely established in canon. When Grogu, at the end of season two, does not want to go with Luke Skywalker, who rolls in? R2. And what happens when R2 rolls in? He gets really excited. And R2 beeps and boops and... Jumps ooh, around. Who, you know, my theory is Grogu is related to Yoda. Yoda always knew there might be a, an attack on the younglings at the temple by a, by the dark side of the, of the force, by the Sith. He's told R2-D2, if any shit kicks off, you get my kid, or whatever it be, his nephew, his son, his whatever, you get that kid out of there. Because Grogu and R2-D2 fucking know each other. When, he, when R2 rolls in at the end of season two, Grogu knows him. He walks straight over to him, and R two D two beeps and boops like he's just had a line of coke. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that's my theory. R two D two saved Grogu from the temple. I like that. I think it's good theory. I don't know where he put him, but yeah, <laughs> just he's probably got a little box inside of him that you can just well, stick Grogu got him, in. Probably, he's got him on a ship or something, hasn't he? While Anakin's doing the slaughter, and R 2s like, yeah, he ain't looking at what his droids up to, is he? He's he's just shepherding him away, putting him in an escape pod, and off he goes. Yeah, that's a fair point. I like it's, that. It's, it's, it's a theory. It's a theory. That's all. No, but it's it's going to be interesting because moving forward, I, I, like, how are they going to explore more about Grogu? Because He's gone off with Luke to the Jedi, the new Jedi Temple. Um, but there's nothing in the new up and coming sort of TV shows and stuff that has any hints that Grogu's going to be in it. Well, um, I don't think we're going to see Grogu again in season three, personally. No, um, we won't. I, 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 my, my theory is I think they're saving Grogu for the next batch of films. That's a good show, actually. And he's well established. He's well established, and if you leave him out of Mandalorian for a year, maybe two seasons, people are going to be itching to see him again. It's interesting you say that because the next director of um, well, who's been lined up for the next film, which is meant to be, it's, it's currently touted to come out in twenty twenty three, is uh, Tika Waititi. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, and he did some of the best episodes of Mando, didn't he? He of did the last two of season one. Yeah, um, and he also voiced the droid. Uh, yeah. What was it? IG Eleven. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, and if if you don't know who he is, Robbie, he directed Thor Ragnarok. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I, I'm quite interested to see like what he as does. As long as it's not Ryan Johnson. Oh man, I, I, everyone's got beef with Ryan Johnson. He's got a good name. Yeah, Ryan's a good name. <laughs> he just spells it a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good name, and he and he. And he and, he directed some of the best episodes of Breaking Bad. I'm not denying that. But he just took a great big steaming turd all over the Star Wars legacy with his film. I don't know. See, Last Jedi is one of my favourite. 
Me and you have had we've had words about this. Yeah, we have, we have. We don't bore the public with it because I think it's the worst Star Wars film, even worse than Phantom Menace. <laughs> oh, oh I'm not. I'm not even going to rise to it. <laughs> Um, he's actually, uh, this week, I think, he basically came out and he wanted to um, direct a couple of episodes of Mando. Star, uh, Star Wars moment, Darth Vader. No! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they did that again. Um, they, uh, George Lucas really <laughs> tarted up the Blu-ray edition, didn't he? With, yeah, um, he added yeah, that into no. Return of the like, Jedi. Why, why? You know? <laughs> No, it was, it was bad enough in '99 when he tied them up back then. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yes, yeah, but yeah, keep 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 him away from Mandalorian, please, Dave. Please, John. Please don't let him go anywhere near me. <laughs> don't hurt our baby. Um, <laughs> it's it's so because of COVID and stuff, and um, there's been a setback with certain production, and um, so they. I, and I'm not sure if they rejig stuff or this was always the plan, but. So the book of Boba Fett is due to film in the volume first, and then that's due to come out. I think either Christmas or January they're tightening it. Yeah, December they said December twenty twenty one. Yeah, so that means then that filming on the Mando will start production after that for season three. So you'd theoretically think that Mando season three would be after, like uh, the book of Boba, and. Um, Apparently Mando will appear in Book of Boba, though. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. What do you think the Book of Boba is going to be about then? You said it, it kind of established how he got out of the Sarlacc pit and things like that, but where do you think they're going to go with it? Because the way that they left it in the um, after credit scene at the end of Mando is he kind of takes over Jabba's... Well, he goes into Jabba's palace, doesn't he, and takes over the throne. He's, be- he's going to become a crime boss. It's, yeah. going to, it, it's Basically, he's going to be the grief carger of um of Tatooine. But in terms of story then, where are they gonna go? I, I think it'll be a bounty hunting, crime uh, ridden um, um Star Wars uh, meets the Godfather. You know? Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to describe it. I think it the I think Father. The, yeah. <laughs> the God Boba. Father, father Fit. <laughs> hey, you come to me to Father Fit on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Streets, mate. I'm, I, he's from no, he's not Australian. He's from New Zealand, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Right. I, lo- I, I, I love actually how they they brought him back to play Boba because he's actually he's only ever played Django. Yes, of course, of course, of course. And he, he didn't do any of the uh, any of the clone voices. Obviously, I think they used pretty much the same voice actor for all of the clones in the animated series, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's and it's great because you know he he looks older. You know, he's he he's the right age to play the character. Uh, I thought he might he may have spent a bit more time in the gym. And that's not that's not, that's not <laughs> a lot of people you know, that. It's like when we first see him, he's got this pudgy belly and the armor. It's just like, oh man, please. But you you quickly forget about that though when he starts. Oh yeah, beating stormtroopers to death with a stick. So <laughs> he, the first time he shoots that rocket out of the jetpack and he just takes out the carrier and it's just like yeah oh, that's yeah. the most iconic moment for me when he turns around and they're blowing up behind him and Mando says nice shot I was aiming, <laughs> I was aiming at the other one yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> brilliant absolute comedy top genius so in December go on go on what you going to say Robbie there is one thing that I don't understand because you know it's pretty obvious is it, is. is it Star um, Wars related or... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go on, Robbie. Um, at the end of series two, when um, they look on the, the security cameras and see his lights on the going here, there, and everywhere, but you can't see the bloke doing it. Yeah. And he comes through the door, and Mando says, You know, are you a Jedi? I'm like, um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> hello. It's like with Nail and I, are you the farmer? <laughs> Saying that, Mando, of course he's the fucking Jedi. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I, I literally, I literally paused there and I went, and I sort of shouted out, no, I'm just a clean, I just picked up this light, so I started swinging it about, like the bloody best, you know. <laughs> but, okay, in defence of that, though, in defence of Din, sorry, Robbie, what were you going to say? No, I was just laughing. Oh, in defence of Mando, right, um, 
the previous person that he's just fought is Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon has a dark saber, which is very similar to a lightsaber. And if anything, like Mando probably hasn't really seen a lightsaber before. Um, so that he sees someone wielding one doesn't necessarily mean that they're a Jedi. Yeah, but the thing is, though, he wouldn't be attacking his own creations, would he? I think we're going down a rabbit hole here, boys. That's true. That's true. But um, so, yeah, one thing I, I kind of wanted to <laughs> touch on is that in December, um, once Mando had kind of wrapped up and finished its series and stuff um, of season two, they announced all these different other shows that were coming to Disney Plus, Star yeah. Wars related in the future. Um so I can just list a few to begin with. So you got The Bad Batch, which is the first one. Can't wait. Comes out on Tuesday, I believe, the 4th, isn't it? Yeah, it comes out Star Wars Day. Yeah, may the 4th be with you. Not Revenge of the 5th. No, um, no. That's, if, I have a, if I have a curry on, on May the 4th, sometimes I have Revenge <laughs> of the 5th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got the Obi-Wan series, which has had a few setbacks and stuff, but it, it's finally kind of... Um, Played by Alec Guinness. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. If they could do that, mate. Like, <laughs> They're going to reanimate Alec Guinness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's another way of the force. <laughs> <laughs> um, on it first. God, I, you, you just... <laughs> I don't well, even, I don't even want to know what that was. Well, you got to... It's like me, the boy, the droids... And no questions. What the fuck are you going to do with those boy, the boy and the droids? Then <laughs> he's a dirty old man, isn't he? Bam, 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 bam. I am sorry, guilty as charged. <laughs> um, what are the other ones that they've got? So you've got um, Book of Boba. You've also got Mando season three. Um, so I said the Obi Wan series, which um, is actually confirmed. Hayden Hayden Christensen to reprise his role as I've Vader. I've seen that. I've seen that. It'll be flashback scenes, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, maybe, but then it depends on what the story that they go for. Because don't forget, at the same time, Vader is hunting um, yeah. Obi Wan, so they could tie it into like you know maybe it's a subplot. They show hope, Vader trying to hunt. I hope they do. Yeah, that would yeah, be awesome. So, um, um, what's his name? We played, um, played um... Obi Wan. Yeah, um, you, you and McGregor. That's it. Yeah. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> <laughs> um, the dude that played the dude of the character that was... Oh, that dude. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. The one with the beard and the hood and stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, one, <laughs> the one that looks a bit like you in your profile picture here. That's the one, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You and McGregor. <laughs> I think he's set to play the role again, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Signed. They've, they've got a very interesting cast. They've got um, Ice Cube, um, son in the cast as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll have some uh, we'll have some some rapping maybe. That'll be good. <laughs> Star Wars rap. It's a new oh, thing. Yeah. Imagine going into the cantina and they the cantina band weren't playing the you know the normal the stuff that we're used to, and it's just a bit of rap. <laughs> yeah, and they're all wearing gold chains. Yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> their jeans are in their asses. You got gangster butts. <laughs> 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 um. So one of the other ones is we've touched on this as well is the Ahsoka Tano. Yeah. Um, which I think, and again, we've touched on it, um, we'll explore Th- Thrawn and go into a bit more detail um, with what happened with Ezra at the end of Rebels. Yes, I think that's that's the only way it can go, really, especially um, the, the episode The Jedi, um, season two Mando, um, she, where she faces off against the magistrate. Mm-hmm. Um, she 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 asks us straight out, "Where is your master? Where where is Thrawn? Thrawn?" So we we will see Thrawn hopefully live action. We will see Ezra Miller live action a few years older, mm. perhaps trained as a Jedi. Perhaps him and Thrawn have had to make peace and live together wherever they were, um, and both of them have changed as a result of that. Thrawn is less evil, and Ezra is is less inclined to be. A Jedi. Um, I think if that happened, though, then it would kind of be like episode one, and then it's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd hope there'd be more of a story arc, wouldn't you? But I think over the over the course of it, we're, we're, we'll see. I think it will cross over with with the Obi Wan uh, season uh, series. I, I, I think the potential for the crossovers. I don't um, know how it would cross over because they're set in different time frames. 
So Obi Wan oh, is between. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Obi Wan set three yeah, and four so, between three yeah. and four, and then this is after six. Yeah, because Obi Wan dies in four, so that would be difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. he just he just pops up as a ghost every now and then. It's like Hello, well, he, has all, he, he has already done that. Yeah. Out, you know, and had to go on it. <laughs> uh, Obi- you guys have watched Star Wars, right? Uh, you do realize Obi Wan appears as a ghost more than once. No. Yeah. You you're <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> You're telling lies now. You're telling lies. Go to the Dagobah system. There, (laughs) you'll find Yoda. (laughs) Uh, No, that was just a fever dream. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was what it was. It was them half um, spiders getting at Luke, wasn't it? Making him all freak out. He's having a spice dream. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Hanging around with Han too long. Uh, Well, I found these mushrooms and I started eating them and I still... And I saw Bob, um, Obi Wan. So you say Boba Fett? So- well, I was on Endor and I found these mushrooms growing <laughs> on the side of a tree, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I decided I'm just going to eat them all. And the next thing I knew, Obi Wan's ghost was there telling me to go to a place called fucking Dagobah. <laughs> and I was so spaced out, man. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the other ones, which is uh, there's a couple actually, which um, I'm interested to see how they do it. Um, but yeah, they're they're a bit random. So you got Star Wars Rangers of the New Republic. So my initial thoughts on this are: um, so you've got the Rangers who have gone round and they've kind of identified Mando during the Mandalorian series. So yeah. one was um, played by Dave Filoni. Yeah. Twice actually he's played it, and um, in season one and then season two. I think it's going to be a focus around them. And almost when the empire has fallen, you still got the remnants of the empire that are yep. going around trying to reestablish and then they're trying to build out of that the first order. I think it's going to be the, the basically the fall of the new republic and how they didn't get it right, and then that caused the first order to form. So I think it's going to be a bridge between like um, after Mando and before yeah. the the um, Force Awakens. Yes. I'll... Also, can I just add that when these new series of everything that comes out, there is one character that I want to see that haven't appeared in the newer series, and that's I I want to I want to see an Ewok. I really do. I want to see. An... <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring back the Ewoks. You know, little fairy bears are your thing, are they? Fairy yeah, I, I like I like Ewoks. They're lovely with a bit of some tata sauce and some chips. Some chips yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of dip, yeah. I like I like a, I like a, a Wookie steak, but they're a bit chewy. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible. Um, I, I recently watched the two um, um, Ewok films on Disney Plus that that were done uh, years ago. You know. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I can't bring myself to torment to, to go through it again. They they, they aren't great, <laughs> are they? Let's face it. <laughs> They're they not, but they are. It's got Warwick Davis in it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You don't see him though. The amount of characters he's, he's played on Star Wars. You don't see him much. He's very short. <laughs> I'll be in everything in Star Wars. You know, you, you must think he's immortal or something. You know. With the um, other shows that are coming out, you've got Andor. So Andor f- uh, follows Cassian Andor, who was actually in Rogue One. Yeah, he died at the end. Yeah. It's, spoiler for anyone who doesn't <laughs> know anything about anything. I think anyone who's listening to this podcast by this point is a Star Wars fan. If they're yeah. not and have just randomly stumbled upon it, then that that's kind of a bit crazy. And if you've gotten this far, just one uh, question: What is Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. What is Star Wars? <laughs> what's, a, what's a Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. And what do you do with it? Yeah. And there's there's two other ones that um still to mention. There's Lando, so that's a TV show around Lando. Um, I think that that's going to be set between the third and fourth film. Um, I hope they get the, uh, the, the the solo cast back for that because that would that would be good to see. I, I'm hoping for a second solo film. Yeah, solo, I think, whenever it first came out, I wasn't that pleased with it. But as it's as time's gone on, it's kind of grown on me a bit more. But that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. And then the last one is The Acolyte. So The Acolyte is one that I'm not 100% familiar with um but i do believe that it's got like an all-female cast um is it based around the the characters from the clone wars that one i'm not 100 percent sure i think it might be but i couldn't tell you i've um, not even heard of it i've got to be honest yeah there's so many that they kind of announced some of them got like really came out under the radar 
because that Andor one I didn't even know about. Apparently, there was meant to be another one with Gina Carano, and <laughs> she had her own series, and then she had her I, whole debauchery. And I'd hope you bring her up. <laughs> I'm not doing a um, Jump of the Heart series as well. And, and not that I've heard of. No, um, that's what I've, I've heard that it was going to be a Jump of the Heart series, and God knows why. They're also going to do a series with um, Luke Skywalker's aunt. Aunt, you know, in, aunt um, May. Not Aunt May. Aunt May, for <laughs> some strange reason. <laughs> aunt Rue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I don't know why, but... I've not, I've not heard of the Jabber or the or the Aunt Brew. Um, is it, it is Aunt Brew, isn't it? Uncle yeah. Owen and Aunt, aunt Brew. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. So to, to wrap things up then, guys... Um, just let me know what your thoughts are on the future of Star Wars. Do you think it's positive? Do you think it's it's not good? Is it too much? A lot of people have said that it's going to get a bit like the films where we're going to get oversaturated with Star Wars content and um, people are going to fall out of love with it. Or do you think it's just the right amount because it's varied, it's varied with like who you're following? It's different characters and stuff. What are your thoughts? In my opinion, there's, they're starting to scrape the barrel now, but... You know, that's just my opinion. Nice, I'm gonna go nice with, and positive, Robbie. <laughs> I'm going to go in a slightly different direction um, with, with my analogy of, of, of the, the future of Star Wars. I think the future of Star Wars will be very bright if they let John Favreau and Dave Filoni take over it. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Put them in charge. He, uh, Whoever they've picked, and and let's face it, they've picked a wide and varied group of directors. You know, Bryce Dallas Howard's episodes are fantastic. Yeah. You know, they they, they got uh, Ricardo Rodriguez in to do the Boba Fett episode. That was awesome. It's you know they 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 are picking the best directors that are available for the content that they want to shoot. And if you put them in charge of the Star Wars universe, the films, the TV, everything, I feel confident that it will go from strength to strength. People won't get bored of it because I don't like the Marvel universe. It's no secret. I'm a DC guy, but they've made how many God knows billions of pounds making, you know, Favreau was Marvel. And of course, Filoni, who was just stumbled into George Lucas's life one day yeah. and, and literally picked his brain to the point like George Lucas even questions like, is this guy reading my mind? You know what I mean? He's like, this guy. So if we've got Filoni, we've basically got Lucas. Yeah. And that is the future of Star Wars for me. If they if they make a horrendous mistake and let those two guys go and don't give them the, the reins, then it could go, like, like Robbie said, they could start scraping the bottom of the barrel. But yeah. with Filoni and with Favreau, I don't think that's going to happen. I agree. And to, I've to... Just, had a, just had a crazy thought. Go on. It won't happen, but it's a crazy thought. Right, just uh, Disney owns Star Wars, right? Yeah. Bring Mary Poppins in as a Jedi Master. <laughs> Why? <laughs> should, we bring in, should, them? should we bring in the three racist uh, blackbirds as well from uh, from Dumbo? <laughs> yeah, and, and and the two Siamese cats from Lady and the Tramp. We'll bring oh, those God. in as well. And go, no, no, that, no, that's that's not going to work. That's when they're scraping the barrel if they start doing crossover <laughs> stuffs like that. Um, <laughs> So I just wanted to sort of reinforce your point, James. Um, so I'm a massive, massive fan of Dave Filoni and his work. Like the amount of people that I talk to that um, maybe aren't the biggest Star Wars fans or even, you know, Mando fans or whatever. But the amount of like disdain they sort of have for the films that came out, the, the new, like the sequel trilogy. And yeah, they, they kind of gone away from Disney and Star Wars in general. But whenever I talk to them about Mando and how Dave Filoni's involved and stuff, it kind of brings them back in because he is he is the fans fan, I suppose, of Star Wars, if that makes any sense at all. Like it he, does. Perfect sense. He knows Star Wars through and through. And if you give him a project to do to do with Star Wars, he'll do it like fantastically. Um and one thing I would love to see, I know that the next film is touted to be like Tick a Wide T D. Um, but I'd love to see Dave Filoni, like directing his own film. I think Filoni and Favreau together would would just well, why not? They, they, these are the guys who have they put together the volume. 
They used technology that already existed that anyone else in the world could have put together, but they didn't. It was Floney and Favreau. Yeah. It, was their, it was their brainchild. It was their idea. And it keeps evolving and it keeps getting better. All of the Marvel things that they're shooting now, WandaVision, whatever, Falcon and the... Winter whatever, Soldier. W- Winter Soldier. They're using the, the volume, aren't they? Mm. And it's the future of filmmaking. They have created the future of filmmaking. You can control the environment. You can control who comes in and out of the environment and you can be anywhere in the world. And that is Filoni and Favreau. That's what they've created. So just, just give them bloody Star Wars. Just let them be in charge. That's, that's the end of it for me. Just Filoni, Favreau, they're the way forward. Yeah, agreed. So may the fourth be with you guys. And uh, I appreciate you guys joining me for this special Star Wars edition of the Trash Arts Take podcast. I've had a lot of fun. It's been nice chatting to you guys. Bit different, bit different, but it's been awesome. And uh, thanks, James. Thank you, Robbie. I'd just like to say as well, I love you. (laughs) Is that to the audience or me? No, you see, this is where you need to edit it afterwards. You're a Star Wars fan, right? I say I love you, and you two say I know. Oh, (laughs) So we'll do that. We'll do that again, and then you, Sam can edit it afterwards. Okay. Oh, just one more, th- and guys, that and guys, there's just one more thing I'd like to say. I love you. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that'll be a nice closer. <laughs> right. Anyway, chaps, thank you very much. And, thank uh, you. Yeah. Have a good one. Peace out, guys. Bring back the Ewok, Ewok mania. So, guys, hope you really enjoyed that. As ever, leave a like, leave a comment. Let us know your favourite Mandalorian moment, um, whether it be from Season 1 or Season 2. Entirely up to you. Just let us know. Subscribe as well, guys. And also, check out our website, www.trasharts.co.uk. And uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything Trash Arts-y. Uh, other than that, thank you. And Trash Arts, take out.